Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. Now, this is episode 99 and um, next time, episode 100, <clears throat> there will be a giveaway. So um, I will upload a, a giveaway video on the YouTube channel very soon so you can see uh, what you can win and how you can win it. Um, but that's all for uh, another time. Today we're looking at the week of March the 22nd to the 28th. On the 21st we obviously had the spring equinox, um, energetically known as, um, obviously spring, but also as new beginning coming out of all the lower energy <clears throat> that um, a lot of us probably felt. So it's a very good time for manifestation and for doing more, if that makes sense, right? So with that in mind, remember that you create your energy. If your energy is low and you have no way of getting it up, it'll stay low, therefore you manifest not so well, right? <clears throat> so as I always say, there's loads of ways um, to get your energy higher. My favorite one is using the pendulum in front of the solar plexus and draw yourself a vortex of fresh energy. And once the pendulum has drawn the vortex, you literally just step in physically. And then you go put your hands like this, like you know, palm, palms up, so to speak, at your belly button, and then go up to the throat like this. And you draw a wheel with your hands, and this way you internalize the energy and take fresh energy with you. That is still my favorite um, <clears throat> way of firing energy because it's quick and um, doesn't cost a thing, <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, that's just that. So before we go into the first star sign, we're now in Aries. Um, we're looking at the overall energy for the week ahead. Again, we're looking at March the 22nd to the 28th, 2021. Let's have a look at the overall energy and what, what we get. Here we go. We have two birds. So before we go into the meaning of the birds, every time we have birds, it um, the, the, the message or one of the messages becomes just step back a little, right? See things from a higher point of view. Don't get riled up about situations and don't just respond or react. Step back a little to assess if it's worth your while to even answer or comment on situations. <clears throat> Here's the overall energy for the week ahead. We have the Kingfisher and the Crow. And the Kingfisher is the animal that tells you no matter how difficult life is at the moment, you will manage. You're very resourceful. You have been in, in dire situations before, should you be in dire situations or in dire straits right now. And you always find a way out. You survived 100% of your worst days. And because of the energy of the spring equinox, what the guides are saying to you is don't look back. You don't, you don't walk that way. You're not living there anymore. <clears throat> Be in the now to plan and manifest your future, if that makes sense. And the Kingfisher is basically here to tell you that you are supported and that you are okay. And then with the crow, the animal of transformation and therefore change, what the guides are saying to you is don't rush anything it doesn't all have to start now and then be massive and all of a sudden you have no problems anymore because it doesn't quite work that way <clears throat> in a way it's all about how you pace yourself as you get through your your issues and that's what they're saying to you is you will get through it because obviously you have the energy of birds and the energy of a kingfisher plus the spring equinox um so you know, what more do we need? That was the overall energy for the week ahead. Now going into the very first star sign, um, which is Aries. Let's have a look what we got for Aries. Oh, card fell, fell out. Oh, two cards fell out. That's all we need then. <clears throat> Aries, you have the companion and the shaman of tradition. So, for those of you who are in a relationship, that does not mean the relationship is shite. 
and nothing works, the companion means a couple of things for Aries. Number one, reflect on why you entered a relationship. And this is also important because this is not just for people who are in an intimate relationship, even though <clears throat> when the companion shows up, he wants you to look at close relationships. If you are a person that has no um, partner or no relationship to speak of, then look at your next closest relationship. Is it the relationship that you have to a very close friend? Is it the energy you put into your work? So this is where you look at that companionship, <clears throat> that other energy that is in your life quite strongly. So this is the week for Aries, <clears throat> excuse me, to reflect on, but not on the bad or good things. It's just like, what, what made me do this? And how do I feel about it today? And first and foremost, if it gives you strength, which elements give you strength? And maybe you can then have a conversation about these elements to make sure that they're highlighted within that situation or that relationship, because you also have the shaman of tradition which means traditionally it is not necessarily something you talk about a lot. Traditionally you follow a pattern <clears throat> in life, how you approach difficulties. And what the shaman of tradition is basically saying to you is, why don't you break that tradition and talk about it? You know, make, make time for it and ask whoever the other party is to have a heart to heart and sit with you so that you can all be fulfilled inside that relationship. Okay, because this is all about, especially with the spring equinox being about new beginnings, this is all about harmonizing your life. And because the more harmony there is, the, the better you feel, uh, the better you will feel, and also the higher the energy is. And you have heard of this yin, yin and yang thing, you know, negative, positive. <clears throat> People sort of focus a lot on, on the word negativity. What it really means is there might be opposing forces um, within the element of who you are and who the other party is. But the idea is to harmonize the two. Find common ground. What's the common denominator? And look at the positives, if that makes sense. Um, and don't just dismiss anything, right? Just really reflect and talk about it, right? That was Aries. And now we're going into uh, Taurus. And as mentioned, we're looking at the week of March the 22nd to the 28th, 2021. Taurians, you have the horse and the bull. What they're saying to you for this very week is to Make sure you have a lot of me time. Personal space is really important. And once you have claimed that personal space, <clears throat> you need to make sure that people understand to not overstep the boundaries you have just created. Reality is, this is not about you running away. This is about you recharging your batteries. And you have that right to recharge them in peace and quiet. <clears throat> but this is the, the, the message for Taurians this week. Create and not ask for, claim me time. And first and foremost, tell whoever is there who could potentially overstep boundaries you know, they're not bad people, you know, but you give, they take. And if they're not, not used to you wanting your personal space, they will obviously become like, you know, <laughs> more interested in, in, in why you're removing yourself. So it brings out insecurities in them. Um, but this isn't about them. This is about you. So remember this. Claim your space and tell people to honor that you need a bit of space to yourself, right? Short and sweet for Taurians. Going into Gemini, drawn to a different deck. <clears throat> Gemini. Gemini, you have the Osprey and the Barn Owl. <clears throat> Again, 
two birds. So we had two birds before. So again, the first message is to step back a little in order for you to be able to reflect better on what is actually going on in that life of yours. And for um, Geminis, you have the osprey and the barn owl, like I said, and the osprey is a bird of prey that tells you you are <clears throat> not weak. You are not powerless, right? You may feel it. If you are feeling it, that's what the osprey is for, saying to you, well, maybe it's time for you to, um, you know, show some strength or ask for help because the osprey in this depiction here is on a branch and on water. Water is renewal and the branch tells you that you have made progress already, right? So you are in a way at that point where you're growing regardless of your situation and you have the barn owl which is basically the animal that says my home is important where you live is important so this is not about outside <clears throat> um, elements of your life so much so this is not about um, the job you go to i mean at the moment with lockdown you might work from home but it is not about that this is about where i actually live do i feel welcome here is this a welcoming place do i feel happy here um that sort of thing so this is about reflection what i'm also getting for <coughs> excuse me for gemini is to have a notepad and any and every thought that comes in as you have these questions write them down because as you write it out you have a better chance of reflecting on them by by looking at them again and also get better messages and answers from the guide because you're actually focusing differently right short and sweet for gemini going into cancer cancer let's have a look what we got for cancerians cancerians you have the gray wolf and the canada goose easy <laughs> what they're saying to you right now cancerians make sure people do not walk all over you be in charge of your life as best you can there may be situations that are out of your control try not to control them but the areas that you can control and control is probably the wrong word because controlling is not a really nice thing to do if you need to control things then obviously they are really difficult so guide your pack guide the people in your care guide the people you live with um, but make sure that you are being heard right you know so that people hear you the interesting thing why the why this is mentioned with the wolf is because your next animal guide here is the canada goose and the symboly sim symbolism yeah. <laughs> the symbology is that the canadian goose flies miles before she lands which means there is no change that will happen very quickly and even if there is change that happens tomorrow that new thing that then follows will take quite some time to settle into and therefore be in charge of your affairs right <clears throat> and what i'm getting as well for for cancerians is it's nice that people try to help but they oftentimes advise from their point of view and you might not just simply not be that person that goes down or would go down the same route they would right so um as nice as it is to get some help and advice feel it how do i feel about it and then make um, your plans from there right that was uh, cancerians going into leo well, cards fell out <clears throat> well Leos, that is interesting here, because you have the shaman of birth and the spirit of destruction. The shaman of birth means starting over, starting anew, feeling like now is my time. And the spirit of destruction means really looking, seriously looking at areas of your life that have become stale and that really don't work. And maybe it is time to again it's a, it's not a positive word if that makes sense to destroy that whatever 
it is that 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 keeps you in those energies and in these moments uh, for for want of a better word um destroy the the illusion right look at things for what they are see them for what they are because in order for you to start over and to be at your highest you have to identify the areas where this isn't the case right so short and sweet for leos going into virgo like i said we're looking at the week of march the 22nd to the 28th here we go virgos you have the scarab and the spider the scarab is a uh, a beetle nothing more nothing less but um, the scarab is a revered beetle, or was a revered beetle in Egypt. Um, when it was still about looking at animals and seeing their deity attributes, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and because the scarab is a beetle that can lie dormant until the soil is sort of renewed so he can work, if that makes sense. The scarab therefore stands for regeneration. And because it's the first of two animal guides, um, what they're saying to you, <laughs> Virgos, I have to look this up, <laughs> Virgos, is to realize that now is the time to come out of whatever slumber you're in, whatever you feel, or wherever you feel like, oh, it's all just too much. That energy won't help you one bit. So become a doer, doers do best. It doesn't mean you charge forward and, you know, and, um, you know, uh, tear the crap out of people when they're not nice or whatever the situation is. It, what they're asking you to do is just to allow yourself to come back to truly living who you are, if that makes sense. Because you have the spider as your outgoing animal guide. And the spider is the builder of the web of life. You decide how much energy and how much space and time you give to people in your life. And that's what the guides are saying to you. Again, um, the, the, the topic of reflection seems to be really massive this week, <coughs> which also makes sense. Like I said earlier, you know, with the, um, with the, with the, with the, uh, the spring equinox, you know, sort of lifting that veil of, of um, not feeling so great and, you know, and, and things are growing again and the weather is getting better and the days are getting longer, all that kind of stuff. Use that change in your environment to recharge your batteries a little bit better right that was virgo going into libra drawn to another deck librans <laughs> okay while this is a week of reflection for librans what the guides are saying to you, because you have the maid's mother and the demiurge, Cocopelli the demiurge. What they're asking you this week is to just be. Try not to have arguments, try not to make massive decisions. Use this week to maybe just recharge your batteries, maybe reconnect to life. Um, maybe reconnect to, to um, nature, you know, if you can get out. You know, um, touch a tree, hug a tree, be in nature, breathe. Because what the guides want you to do, you have the maze mother here, right? So she's in the middle of a field, right, that she looks after. And because you're supposed to look after yourself and the one or the people that you love, kind of thing, you need some energy to do that. And so this week, it is really important for Librans to simply be yourself and Cocopelli, the demiurge, is basically a gentleman with a pipe. And um, this is not, uh, or with a flute, sorry, not a pipe, with a flute. So this is about creating harmonic frequencies, for want of a better word, um, to carry yourself over whatever bridge of maybe sadness or, or low energy um, you're under, if that makes sense. So really, really nurture yourself this week. That's all you need to do, Librans. Okay, that was that. Going into Scorpio. Here we 
Jobio. Interesting, again, because you have the caribou and the doll sheep, which means you have two animals with antlers. And every time you have antlers, it means protection. So you have the caribou, right? Also known as the reindeer. And then you have the so-called doll's sheep. And as you can see, the antlers are quite prominent. So at this point in time, your guides and the universe are saying to you, Scorpios, we don't need to see your venom. We don't need you to be aggressive. You are fully protected. Just be within the core of your center and stay true to who you are. And don't let people force you almost into just responding because that's how they push your buttons. So that's why I'm getting strongy, stronger, strongy, <laughs> strongest. Mm. Can't speak. And then the doll sheep is basically an animal that hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. So what they're saying to you is, if you, you allow yourself to just be, simply be, and don't, this is just what I'm getting, don't listen to the crap people feed you. You're halfway there, right? <clears throat> That's this for, for this week for Scorpios. Going into Sagittarius, Sagittarians, looking at the week of March the 22nd to the 28th, 2021. This is the 99th episode of Energy and Star Sun readings. Next week, you can, hopefully one of you can win um, a freebie. I will upload a video to that effect um, some, sometime after uh, this video has been aired, so to speak. Right? So yeah, make sure you therefore like the, the, the Facebook page on, um, on, well, on Facebook, <laughs> the, the Energy and Star Sign page on Facebook, that's what I meant, right? Um, yeah, okay, really important. So going into Sagittarians. You have the ring-necked pheasant and the hummingbird. What that means is that although the energy is quite high this week, right, good energy, to, to bring about change, also good energy to express um, yourself anew. In your case, Sagittarians, you can be quite misunderstood and misunderstood easily. So choose your words wisely and maybe choose when to make a point. Again, it's a bit similar to, to the star sign or the previous star sign, the uh, Scorpio, where they're asking you um, not to respond uh, so that you don't get your buttons pushed, if that makes sense. Which is also another thing to reflect upon, right? Because you have the hummingbird, just like the kingfisher that we had in another, in another star sign. You are very capable of living your life to the fullest of your potential, right? But you need to get there first. And this week, your communication might not be as clear and therefore as fruitful as, as in other weeks. So enjoy the high energy of this very week without making a lot of plans. My feeling is also that when you, um, at least that's what the guys doing, they show me writing. So if you are a person that needs to sign contracts, um, write stuff, maybe if at all possible, it can wait this week, right? So that's all we got for Sagittarius going into Capricorn. It's really weird. Every time I think about or I hear Capricorn, and um, I don't really know uh, uh, any Capricorn other uh, thing of my head here, but there's this Kiss song. She's a dancer, a romancer. I'm a Capricorn and she's a Cancer. And that, that song always comes into my mind when someone says Capricorn. Really weird. Um, yeah, it's got nothing to do with Kiss, it's got nothing to do with the reading, it's just I want to share this with you because every single time Capricorn comes in, that one-liner from, from that Kiss song, um, and I have, have forgotten what it's actually called, pops into my head. Maybe I'm just weird. Who knows? So, Capricorns. It's a bit heavier for, for Capricorns, the energy this week. Because you have the dancer of reconciliation and the shaman of loss. The dancer of reconciliation 
feels like while you're trying to save maybe a relationship, while you're trying to go a little longer in areas that are difficult, you have the shaman of loss right next to it. And what they're saying is, at this point in time, it may not be savable. So if you can put a little pause into a difficult relationship or a difficult topic, just to get a breather, it would go a very long way because the denser of reconciliation means you know, you're still pussyfooting about making peace. So therefore, there must still be things here that are still painful, but you still hurt. And so what they're saying um, to you is, um, Capricorns, is therefore to not just go along with this for, for um, just for the sake of it, right? It doesn't work. Okie dokie, short and sweet, so to speak, at least, <laughs> for Capricorns. Um, going into Aquarius, we have Aquarius and Pisces left, and then that episode is already done. Oh, someone at the door. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> so, <coughs> whew, going into Aquarius, the second last star sign of the week. We're looking at the week of March the 22nd to the 28th. For um, Aquarians, you have the Jaguar and the Arctic Wolf. Jaguar is an animal with unique dots. There are no two alike. And what the guides are saying to you is, don't just try to fit in when you realize that your outlook in life is rather different to that of many people. And this may just be because you're probably deeper than a lot of people you meet and you probably have a more spiritual view of the world so when people <laughs> weird, bother you with what's on the news um, you know and what this world has come to you can easily go under by taking it all on and so what the guides are saying to you is take a deep breath you know and remember who you are in all of this because you have the arctic wolf um, so the wolf, the uh, symbolism uh, here is to, to um, run a pack, be in charge. And yet the Arctic wolf lives in an area where opportunities are rare and where it is much harder to um, actually have a properly functioning pack. So what that means is that... Um, in order for you to make sense of your environment and to be there for everybody you have committed yourself to, it's important that you realize that you do not have to fit in just for the sake of it, right? That was the second last star sign, Aquarius, going into the last star sign of the week, which just happens to be my star sign, Pisces. <laughs> Here we go. Pisceans. We have the big horn sheep and the ferret. What that means for Pisces, for Pisceans, for, for you and me. You and I had a dream. You have the big horn sheep again. It's a sheep that has antlers around the ears which means pay attention to how people speak, not just to what they're saying, right? Um, feel people's intentions through their vibes, if that makes sense, right? Okay, um, there is what is called a golden ratio, which is sort of based on, on numbers that harmonize things. And it has to do also with the human body. And the whole entire ear forms a golden ratio which means anything and everything that comes into contact with your hearing is affecting you quite a bit right so you might also be or we might also be quite affected by sound therefore maybe you know 
look into sound healing, sound therapy, um, frequencies that are healing by default. And we have the big horn sheep. Again, I mentioned that earlier, you know, with the doll sheep, because they're not really dissimilar here. Um, it hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. This very week, March 22nd to 28th, it's all good. Right? Everything is fine. You just have to learn and realize that everything is what it is and not be and not get carried away or allow yourself to have a lot of lower energies just because some circumstances might be difficult. Right? And then we have the ferret, which means while you are a very clever being and while you make a lot of sense how uh, through expressing yourself, you're very concise in your um, delivering of words. This is a week where communication somehow is not that easy. And because you have the ferret, which basically is an animal that is really, really a, a, a very intelligent rodent, and yet a lot of people only remember the ferret for the smell, right? So no matter how much you, you, you try to express yourself, how much you um, express your feelings and emotions, not everybody will get you. And therefore, don't share it with everybody. Share it with the people that you trust. You know, um, you don't, you're not obliged to explain yourself just because they want to know how you're doing. You decide um, when and in what fashion you want to open up. And that's all we have, but remember the bighorn sheep, our ingoing animal guide, hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall. Nothing to worry about for Pisceans this week. Right? That was all we have time for. Thank you so much. And um, episode 99, eh? Um, next week, 100th episode, or hopefully next week, 100th episode, um, and there will be a giveaway. So subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see the video, so you, you realize and know and learn um, how you can hopefully win a freebie. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.